Digital is our society, and our society is digital. And it's important to think of it in those very deeply interconnected ways. How do we manage digital so that we don't get the downsides that have been too often uh, at the forefront of our conversation in the last decade in this country? An area of concern that we have is around data in particular, and it's used in a bunch of ways to target children for advertising, for racial profiling, in algorithms that are uh, difficult to unpack. There is a dangerous concentration of power in our digital economy. We need to take a different frame on it, which is technology always builds on itself. There's a vibrant ecosystem that supports different technologies, in this case, digital. But that shouldn't be a reason to not have the institutions and structures in place to start to channel that in the right direction. The makers of technology also have to imbue the values of trust, transparency, and accountability into the technologies that they create. They need to add speed bumps, if you will, that allows technology to actually work in the interests of their users. This is something that we believe can only be achievable when we have a more diverse set of stakeholders and a more equitable decision-making table that helps lead those decisions forward. We are a social change venture. What we essentially believe is that there are certain values that we would like to see in the world. Values of fairness, equity, inclusion. We work together to see those values come to pass in the world. When I step back and I ask myself what type of world that I want to see, I think about the things that we're doing at Omidyar. How do we foster responsible technology? What does it mean to build a culture of belonging? And finally, what will it take to reimagine capitalism? We should think about technology connecting every part of the society that we live in. And our goal is to make it more equitable. We know that change happens in a lot of different ways. And so our approaches are gonna differ depending on the problems or the challenges we aim to solve. One of our biggest grants right now is actually with the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, which is based in the United Kingdom. So one of the biggest things about private messaging is that it is private, it's encrypted, and we think it should remain that way. And yet we see so many harms being proliferated across these technologies. What ISD, or the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, is doing is that they're helping identify methodologies that both respect human rights and the right to privacy, as well as make these research methodologies actually accessible to civil society organizations and other academics to study the harms of disinformation and understand where hate, violence, and all of these other harms really emanate from. We believe that digital technology can and should work for everyone. And so we aspire to build a system that's fully representative. And so that means that we should be, as an organization, fully representative of the type of system and society that we want to see. We are an interesting bunch of folks who believe that capitalism can be reimagined as capitalists. We are technologists who believe that technology should be a force for good. We are journalists and business people. We are lawyers and humanitarians. We are creatives and artists. And then we work in coalition with organizations like the Digital Public Goods Alliance and civil society actors like Lawyers Hub and organizations like uh, the World Bank and the UN. We call on all technologists, nonprofits, academics, government officials, everybody who has a stake in society to really join together to help shape the future of technology. Look at crypto and Web3, for example. We need to actually collectively leverage our moral imagination in helping understand what are the potential harms that could lead to significant impacts on our societies. There are things on the horizon around Web3 and crypto. There are things on the horizon around quantum. There are things around the horizon around the continued rollout of AI into all sorts of facets of our lives and autonomous vehicles. So there's a whole range of things that we actually know that's on the horizon. And then there's stuff that we don't know that's on the horizon. What's less important is how it's going to develop, and what's more important is what's the architecture that we're going to put together as a democracy, as a society, as philanthropy, you know, to channel that and to make sure that that develops in a responsible and not harmful direction. We shouldn't overstate philanthropy's role because there are all kinds of other sets of players who need to be at the table to get to a good institutional and societal framework for how we think about digital technology.
project. But philanthropy has a couple of advantages. Doesn't have to make a quarterly profit, can convene people and can take the long view as a consequence. Philanthropy can, one, take a step back and define that positive vision for what is that role for technology in our society and how do we best channel it to produce pro-social outcomes and minimize the harm.